My whole life, I've been an anxious person. As a child, I fearfully stayed up at night, haunted by the thought of clowns and other irrational things like bombings and kidnappers. The older I got, however, the more I was anxious about immediate things, such as heights and falling, and especially those two together. The thought of extreme adrenaline-filled roller coasters or anxiety-inducing drops or dangerous mountains filled me with fear and dread, until I was finally confronted with this dread unexpectedly in the form of a 30-foot waterfall. A couple of years ago, my family decided to make the trek into the mountains to go on a camping trip. Camping trips are always times full of fun and adventure with my family and friends. Although I had never been the type of kid to really push myself, and I'm definitely far from a risk taker. On this particular camping trip, however, my family, who was accompanied by a group of close family friends, made the exuberating hike from the campground we were staying at deep into the mysterious mountains of North Carolina. As we skipped merrily along the dirt-covered trail, well, along a dirt-covered, well-worn trail, I laughed and talked to my friends. The clear, breezy weather kept our spirits as high as the sun. It was amazing being away from the hustle and bustle of city life and suddenly engulfed into the peacefulness and restfulness that comes from being surrounded by the quiet beauty of nature. After what felt like endless hours of walking, but in reality was really just a mile, my family arrived at the most beautiful and incredible waterfall I'd ever seen. The ethereal green and blue water lay peacefully surrounded by large old stones. They were covered by hanging green moss, as if the stones were a wall protecting the translucent water hole from the forest above. The foaming water gushed through a crack between two of the stones and rushed into the crystal clear pool below. As I practically bounced ecstatically to the edge of the massive pool, I suddenly was stunned to see a man fly off the top of the tallest rock into the cold water below. As he dived, I opened my mouth wide with absolute shock. I was so surprised to think that anyone would ever want to do something so recklessly dangerous. I would never do that, I quickly assured myself. I played in the clear river water created from the flow of that magnificent waterfall for what felt like way too little time before my mom called me back to the shore of the waterfall's pool. Hey Savannah, come look at this, she shouted excitedly. And that's when I saw my daredevil brother climbing confidently to the top of the tallest waterfall with a cocky smile plastered onto his face. After he completed his speedy ascension to the top of the stone, he looked down into the deep, dark depths of the pool below him. Then he quickly inhaled and jumped, plunging into the water below him. I never thought someone related to me would be so dumb, but here we are. Savannah, you should do that too, my dad commented. As I stared back up at the hill, contemplating the risks of giving it a try, I quickly, I quickly rejected the idea again. That is until my brother, my oldest sibling, who was always quick to tease me for not reciprocating his own reckless personality, resurfaced from his swim through the ice-cold water. He instantly started up a barrage of mocking me and teasing me for not also jumping off the waterfall like he so bravely did, as any sibling with a relationship as competitive as we are would. That's when I suddenly began to reconsider my actions. After several minutes of peer pressure from my brother and the rest of my family, a whole lot of internal rational persuasion, I finally and unexpectedly talked myself into giving it a try. As I made the extremely dangerous journey up to the top of the rock, Deep in my heart, I knew that the most perilous part of my adventure was still yet to come. As soon as I climbed to the top of the desolate mountain that was the waterfall, I made the sudden mistake of looking down into the freezing waters, chilling and glacial, miles below me. I took a deep breath and averted my eyes to my family standing on the shore that appeared forever away to my frightened eyes. I stood nervously, 30 feet away from the hazardous drop, contemplating why I was even up there in the first place. As I was rethinking my entire life, I thought about how many times I let my fear keep me from an experience opportunity, adventure, relationship, or memory that I could have made. As I stood atop the mountain of my fear, I realized that if I never made the decision to push myself and face my fears, I would never fully experience and enjoy my life to the fullest. With that thought freshly in my head, I quickly inhaled and leapt off the top of the cliff. As my body rushed towards the icy water, the shriek bursting from my mouth suddenly turned from terrified to excited. My body dropped like a thousand pound weight was tied to my neck. As I rushed through the air for what felt like both a, sec a split second and an eternity, my body plunged into the frigid, pressuring water. My vision went dark and my body felt the rushing sensation of the freezing water hitting my skin. Legs cutting through the water, my body rushed to the beautiful, welcoming shore. And then I did the same thing ten more times, even though I was still a little bit nervous. After experiencing the adrenaline that came with confronting something that horrified me, I realized that something sometimes just taking the first step or jump past fear can lead to an experience or adventure that you might not have ever gotten the chance to do before that. Now I know that refusing to let fear dictate your decisions can lead to some of your favorite memories and experiences.